Hello, this is Joe here. I just wanted to let you know that this episode went so well and we talked for so long, it's going to be a two-parter. The first episode will contain the segment on Starship and the second episode will contain the segment on the Juice mission to Jupiter. Thank you. Hello, my name is Tony Booth and you're listening to The Obscast. Welcome to the Obscast, the podcast dedicated to Sherwood Observatory, its members, visitors, and all budding astronomers. My name is Joe Gathercole, and this evening we are going to be discussing space exploration, specifically Starship's progress and the scientific mission to Jupiter, set to make many new discoveries and even find evidence for, or lack of evidence for, those elusive off-Earth life forms. Also coming up later, our usual update on what you can look forward to seeing if you take some time to look up. I'm very happy to be joined today by three esteemed members of Mansfield and Sutton Astronomical Society. I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves and that's because they know themselves better than anyone, not at all because I'm worried that I'll pronounce one of their surnames incorrectly. If we could start on my left. <laughs> then we'll go Hello, my name is thoughts. Michael Janicek. My name is Steve Binns, communications officer. And my name is Steve Smith. Good evening. Oh, it's Smith. I thought it was Smith. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said it, not you. Yeah, yeah. That helps. <laughs> well, thank you all very much for being here. If we could start off with uh, Starship. Starship's latest launch was on 20th of April, and it's been reported on through various different lenses as both a success and a failure. I believe the scientific community see it as a success overall. I just wondered what your general views were on uh, that launch itself. Was it a success? Steve? <laughs> um. Well, it got off the ground. It was a very, very slow lift off. I noticed. I thought, is it going to get off the ground? But eventually it did. It slowly built up speed and off it went. It didn't last too long. And when we saw the shot from underneath, I did think some of the rockets weren't firing. I don't know if that was deliberate or not. Perhaps Michael can answer that later. But it failed uh, to get into orbit or anywhere near space. Uh, and the, it self, we were led to believe it self detonated on the way up, and there was a lot of damage on the um, on the launch pad. The launch pad wasn't quite ready for the rocket launch. So, but I think it was a success because the amount of data they would have gathered from all the different systems on board, um, they will analyse that, tweak things, and then. They will get better at it and i'm sure it's just a bit of evolution in play that's my take anyway yeah i mean like you say it lost engines uh, still achieved a height of 39 kilometers and began to tumble and i believe that was because the spacecraft didn't separate from the rocket and spacex had to blow it up so they didn't drop a bomb essentially um is that what everyone else took away from that launch well i'll just finish up and say that it did enter a trajectory over the um, Mexican uh, seas you know it, it was over water so it was quite safe to detonate it up and the debris fell into the sea so um, not quite according to plan but it came it was a bit confusing as well when you saw all the ground stuff there cheering and 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 clapping their hands I thought it was a different audience clapping <laughs> somebody was probably from Virgin or somewhere, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it wasn't. And then we think, but it failed, but maybe it didn't. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I think it was, as you say, there was loads and loads of data gathered from that launch. Um, I think one is the water system that uh, goes on the ground to cool the system. They'll know that next time. And to be fair, they're doing a brilliant job, to be honest, with the amount of cash that they've got. I know Elon Musk is a billionaire but he's got other companies whereas nasa is an extremely hard act, act to follow uh, they spent trillions of dollars and we don't expect elon Musk to spend all that but he's doing a great job and it will just take time and he'll gather all the best parts from all the launches and i believe he'll put most of those together in starship and he will make it a success 
but I think it will be a slow process to get everything right, like Apollo was. Apollo was a slow process, and I believe this will be as well. But we'll have a new dimension, we'll have a new generation of flight, and we can put that use, we can put that to use in future projects, say to the moon or even to Mars. And I think, yeah, he's pave, paving the way for how space is going to use reusable rockets and save money and probably put a base on the moon for one step towards Mars. I suppose one difference with um, the uh, Apollo and, and Starship is uh, Apollo was completely government funded. So that money came straight from the government, where I suppose SpaceX is running a company and making money from contracts as they go along, like with um, Starlink and stuff. What do you think, Michael? Yeah, that's true. I completely agree with, with this with the Steve's. What I find out recently, it's the fact that uh, SpaceX put a form to Federal Communication Commission in the USA for the new launch window for Starship test fly number two this time uh, it's gonna be a little bit bigger window because the dates on the form are from uh, 15th of June to the 15th of December so pretty much six months and uh, I think just because of that that they not really sure what goes wrong with the with the with this with the launch base and uh, they're going to be trying to develop the best in the best way possible the, the new the new launch pad so just because of that it's it's a really long window well as you've already said the launch pad was ripped apart with the concrete flying everywhere and uh was that purely just a bad design on the on the launch pad or is there things they weren't able to do that other companies like nasa and ESA do I, thi I think like the previous launches everything in in terms of spacex is about money so probably they will they've been a little bit short with the money that time when they designed this uh they've done a couple of tests before uh but the tests been just for literally a couple of seconds up to i think 20 25 seconds long so and that in those tests the launch pad behave quite all right that's why they make a decision we're doing it unfortunately do you think michael that on the next launch they will have a the steel plate and water say do you think that'll be in place for the next uh, one they start designing some uh, advanced steel plates because uh, i've seen some footage on the internet but they not show that they're going to use the water well I, in my personal opinion they should use the water i don't think the water had anything to do with the launch it protects the concrete fine but it was the rocket that had minor faults on it that caused it to uh, blow up well they, they did blow it up but it wasn't safe to go any further but that wasn't the drainage system but that is one area that they definitely need to look at otherwise if they don't use it they'll just have to keep replacing it i mean is there a chance that the the three engines that didn't work there could have been some bounce back from the uh, launch pad i don't think so really because the ignition is inside and um if it's the water doesn't go inside it just dampens all the the concrete area around it so once ignition's gone then that's it so if three engines didn't fire then there might have been an ignition problem but i don't think that would have anything to do with the uh with the drainage in the concrete launch pad uh that's how i see it i might be wrong I know there were several systems that failed, which resulted in it self-destructing or being somebody pressing the button and dis destroying it. I wonder, Michael, um, my understanding is there's 33 engines on board. It took off using 30. Was that deliberate to use 30 um, instead of 33? Or was it a, a fault? And I know some other systems failed as it was the separation and stuff like this. Can you, can you expand on that at all? Mm, to be honest with you, I don't know. I don't know nothing about that. The fact okay. is that during the launch, another four stopped working. Yeah. That's the fact. 
Okay. Well, I, I don't know anything about the, the, the previous three. Yeah. But coming back to the to the to the lunch pad and the concrete and all that stuff, they need to definitely do something with it because they just finished a new engines, the Raptor three, and they are more powerful than existing ones. So in terms of trust what they what they what they provide in it's gonna be a lot more power and the uh, and the fire. Well, their original plan for that launch was obviously separation orbit and then a, a splash dam, which, which didn't happen. Hopefully next time, did you say uh, six months would be the window? Yeah, that's, window that's open the, in six months. That's the time on, on, on the form what they put in. I don't know, did that been approved or not, but you know, with Elon, everything's possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, SpaceX described Starship as the largest and most powerful rocket ever made. I guess that's, that's just a fact, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, and does a fully reusable transport system designed to carry both crew and cargo to Earth orbit, the moon and beyond. I wondered what you all thought about that statement in the long term, specifically the beyond part. Are they going to reach Mars in a few years, decades or ever? Yeah, I think they've got to get walk before they can run, really. I mean, if they can go to the moon and create as you see it on Thunderbirds, a village there, domes and everything like that, uh, energy stations and uh, whatever it needs to be a, a platform to jump from the moon to Mars. That's still a long way though, but at least a lot of the power systems will be on the moon. Um, I think that's a long way off to be fair, but they are talking about going to the moon already. So that could be within the next three years, something like that. Hopefully uh, Starship will be ready by then uh, and good to go. So that could take a lot of cargo up there and then keep going backwards and forwards. Like you said earlier, Steve, uh, they just keep repetitive, repetitive, getting stuff there. So three or four trips, you could have loads of uh, power units on the moon. Um, and lo and behold, within a few, couple of years you could have enough power uh departments and stuff on there to start using taking something else up um you know and it bits and bobs and say in three years there could be quite a bit of material on the moon ready for the future the beyond bit let's take each step at a time first because i think the next one to mars is extremely difficult it needs a lot of fuel uh, we don't know the mental well-being of human beings being on another planet as yet and i don't think they will send humans there if they can't get them back otherwise that's a suicide mission and, and they not do that um so i think we've got to wait a fair while for a mars a mars trip is there an opportunity that in the in the meantime while they're working on the moon technology on earth advances beyond starship so it, the next technology yeah. emerging would be the thing that would go to mars it is but once they've got to mars they may have to wait another two years until the planets are aligned so that they can get the slingshot if you want um to get the power to get back to earth and if they've got to be on mars for over a year to two years that's a long time it really is a long time for human human ants and like i say the mental well-being it, it they may not cope well i'm sure it's like and um the way i see it i mean people have talked been talking about this for years i think what they'll do they'll they'll, they'll put loads of stuff on that on mars um ready for any future mission so there's loads of stuff already there there'll be um all the support systems there because it's it's a very hostile environment but i think the moon is, is a lot worse than mars because um the dust is the, the 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 surface of the moon is covered in a dust and it's very very abrasive um yes it'll be a good practice run and it'll be good experience and we'll, we'll gain a lot by going to the moon but i mean this looks like the skylab you know and the international space station 
I'm sure that things will be built in space this will travel to Mars and it'll be it'll be just be going backwards and forwards it'll not be landing you know the, I think the transport thing will be something like you've seen the Martian where you've got a mothership and it goes around Mars and it comes back and stuff like this it uses slingshots um, and then you have other ships going down to Mars and they might even use Phobos or Deimos the moons as a base to fly down from and get back up to we don't know that's all got to come but like you said Steve it's a long time three four months to get there three or four months to get back you're not going to spend uh, 24 hours there and then come back you've got to try and establish yourself there else you're not worth going but ultimately we need to get on that planet isn't you can't beat a human being to look at stuff um Machines are great, and I think machines are the way forward. But ultimately, we'll need to, we want to go there. I just think multiple trips to Mars will be so expensive, and it, I don't think it can be done. But multiple trips to the moon can be. And if they can do a trip, say, from the moon to Mars one a year, they can get quite a bit of material there and without taking off from Earth every time. Yeah, but you could have um, two or three ships moving one on its way one already coming back and eventually you'll have this will be like catching a bus you know there'll be a bus every hour <laughs> space well, every two hours. starship will be able to carry it to 100 people on uh long duration interplanetary flights yeah and exactly. then you won't have a problem with people going mad or being alone i mean it's hard enough now the people who spend six months on the international space station they're especially selected because they're, they're tolerant, they, they can get along with people and stuff like this. It'll be the same sort of process for people who go to Mars uh, or anywhere else. But we've got to start making a move. We'll learn a lot from it and technology on Earth will benefit from it. So do we agree that Starship is a key to a, a permanent human present on the moon? I think there'll be something else that will do it, not Starship. I think Starship, they all have a life expectancy and say in 15 years time, there may be something better than Starship. Um, greater power, greater speed, greater cargo load. It, it's like anything. It, uh, technology now is moving so fast that once you've got it processed and everything, it's out of date and something else comes along and overtakes it. And I think that will be the same for that that overtakes Starship as well. And that it'll just get get being overtaken every few years michael what do you think uh, starship key to human presence on the moon uh i think it's not only about the starship and spacex because uh, as we as we all know mission to the to the moon is planned for 2025 and it's going to be sts by nasa so uh they need to work together but at the same time we we couldn't forget about uh, other countries, especially at the moment quite strong uh, is China, China and Chinese Space Agency because uh, they planning to set up first uh, space station quite soon in, in, in Earth orbit and uh, they've been already on the moon unfortunately it wasn't manned mission but again they they looking quite strong and they 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 the plans are really they it, it is it is something to to looking forward to be honest i've got some uh, uh, stats here for for spacex they can carry 150 tons into orbit if they want to reuse the rocket and 250 tons if they don't mind letting it burn upon re-entry with no fuel to to land uh, if that turns out to be what they claim putting mars and the moon aside completely this is surely going to change the way we do space flight and the scope of what we can achieve in space in near earth orbit anyway no matter what just most definitely that yeah. capacity to carry that weight is uh because weight's everything isn't it in space travel it is yes yeah. if they can do that uh maybe some new space stations on their way in, yeah. in the next couple of decades it's like on earth reusable recycling and it's the same is going to happen to space we need to recycle and reuse as best we can 
bit of rubbish at it, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's another side to the story uh, which Steve touched on earlier, actually, and that's uh, other than, other than what Starship will be capable of doing in terms of human spaceflight, but whether human spaceflight is a goal worth chasing at all. There are arguments put forward that robots can go further, don't need life support. Uh, no, they don't need the life support we fragile humans do, so why bother sending fragile humans in the first place anywhere outside of Earth orbit if robots don't die as easily? <laughs> yeah, yeah because, the, you know, <laughs> that's a good one, because it'll be the first person to die on the moon, the first person to die on Mars, the oldest person on the moon, blah, blah, blah. It, it's all rubbish, really, these statistics. They don't count. And we've all got a finite life. And I think somebody who, who may be getting towards the end of life anyway, who wants to go to Mars, maybe, you know, yeah, if you can get them back, but if they've only got a short lifespan to live anyway, maybe somebody like that, in the future, it might be more acceptable for them to go, especially if they're all up for it etc we don't know but there's there'll be some great minds thinking about all this stuff and they will figure it out there's, there's no computer we've made that can do what the human mind can do i think ultimately machines are the way forward artificial intelligence as dangerous as it is maybe for us on earth will be used in space because you can send a rocket that might take ten thousand years to get to the next nearest system to us but when it gets there it'll still work and I think that will be the thing for in, interstellar space travel. That must you know? be a priority to send yeah. first the robots or nanobots yeah. or whatever you're calling it yeah. to, to build the infrastructure. Then you need to start thinking to send the humans. Yeah. Is there anything else anyone wants to touch on on Starship before we have a, a short break and move on to Juice? I just want to add a little bit. It's a good, it's quite good. I, I find it quite interesting. There was a book. Uh, uh, the author is Tim Fernholz, and uh, the title of the book is Rocket Billionaires, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and the New Space Race. So if someone's got some spare time, yeah, it's a really good book. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get some money off them for plugging that. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of The Obscast. Part 2, containing our discussion of the Juice Mission, will be out within a day or two. <laughs>